Hello, welcome back to uh, the Sunday School lesson for the, for this week. Um, let me get this off. It's using a fog problem, <laughs> really bad. So uh, it's good to be back. Good to be good. Good to be with you. Um, as you know, most of the time, and this week as well, I, I visit with you on Thursdays. So this is this is Thursday and. Wow, we know what a mess yesterday was, and so uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but I know it's, uh, whew, we're all probably out of sorts and not uh, not too happy about it. Just uh, uh, wanted to point out that you just remember that uh, we're not a member of any, we're not a citizen of any particular human um, country. I mean, we're, uh, of, you know, we're not citizens of this world. We're, uh, you know, we're citizens of God's kingdom. And, I'll, and I'm not, I don't know if you read it. I probably didn't. But if it, it was in the Encourager, I wrote a little thing, a little letter. And I just wanted to point out to you that um, this is a great um, piece of scripture to go by, to live by. So just remember this when things just seem crazy and you can't put up with them. It's uh, Romans 8, 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Very simple, very true, right? If God's on your side, who can be against you? Even if bad things happen, even if if worse came worse and, and you were killed, well, there, there you go. You're going you're gonna to be... Uh, forever in God's kingdom in heaven. So it's not something that you should uh, feel that worried about. So let's uh, let's begin um, as we do each week with a prayer, and then I'll read the uh, colic for this Sunday, and then I'll tell you uh, the uh, readings, the lectionary readings for this Sunday's service. And as always, uh, this I'll get this from the Book of Common Prayer. So if you have one at home, you can. Uh, get get your book common prayer out and, and read along with me. Uh, so we're on page 601, 601 of the uh, book common prayer. And it's under first Sunday of Epiphany. And it's uh, subtitled The Baptism of Our Lord. <clears throat> so let us uh, let me uh, go ahead we'll go ahead and say the prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to get together. Thank you for blessing us with, with all the riches of your kingdom. Please help us to uh, look to you for our help and not worry and uh, know that you will always take care of us. And as, as your word says, you are for us who can be against us. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, now for the colic. The first Sunday of Epiphany, as I said earlier. Eternal Father. At the baptism of Jesus, you revealed him to be your son, and your Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Grant that we, who were born again by water and the Spirit, may be faithful as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to we'll flip over to, in our... Uh, prayer book to um, it would be the page 719719 prayer book and it's under the first Sunday of Epiphany in year B you know, if you look across that you see that all the readings for uh, the first Sunday of Epiphany are the, are the same except for the gospel readings are different okay but let me give these to you the first Reading the Old Testament reading is from Isaiah. We've been spending a lot of time on Isaiah the last uh, few last month or so, and you know that is it's kind of towards the uh, middle end of the Old Testament. That's kind of confusing, but if you if you thumb through there to kind of that part, you'll you'll either get Ezekiel or Jeremiah or or you might find Isaiah because it's so big. But if you get the one of those other two, just kind of go towards the front and you'll final good to it. It's Isaiah 42, chapter 42, the big 4-2 on the page, verses 1 through 9, 
So it's Isaiah 42, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. And the uh, psalm for this week is Psalm 89, 1 through 29. Uh, it may be, let me look. I've got the bulletin for this week. Uh, the, got, the psalm reading is, this week is 20 through 29. So uh, in your book, you'll have, a lot of times you'll have uh, two, two things. One will say, like this is 1 through 29, or for, uh, Psalms 89, 20 through 29, and the reading in our bulletin is 20 through 29, okay? And then, the uh, words we typically have, the letter, or the epistle, the letter, uh, this week is Acts. It's you know, as I told you, uh, told you many times. We've got the uh, the Gospels, the first four books of the New Testament: Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are written by uh, people who were there. Well, two of them were written by uh, people who were there during Jesus' ministry. The other two written by people who talked to people who were there. But it's about uh, Jesus' birth, two of them, and uh, about his ministry. Up until the time he was um, he was crucified, died on the cross for us, and then was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. So uh, then, after that, we have Acts, which was written by Luke, who wrote the book of Luke, obviously, and uh, it continues on. And it's about the first um, the, the early church and about how they got started. So this the Acts, the, the readings this week are epistle or letter. Uh, Reading is from Acts. That's the fifth book of the uh, New Testament. Acts chapter 10, 34 through 38. And then our gospel for this week is Mark chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. So you see the, the uh, letter and the uh, gospel are fairly short this week. But just packed with good, real good stuff. All right, before we go into that, uh, I want to talk to you about um, about uh, what I've kind of called our motto, going to be our motto is uh, just remember two things: you know, love God, love people, love others. Uh, and I thought I'd maybe give you a little a little background about where that comes from. And uh, so I grabbed one of the uh, bulletins for this Sunday, and I'll point out if you read my letter that I put that I every couple of weeks I put in the uh, encourager I said a few weeks ago I, I was going to start talking up going through the uh, the uh, uh, the bulletin the lectionary and the uh, um, and the, on the service um, and, and break it down because when you're uh, we do the same things every week. It's good. It reminds you of very important things. But the, the problem that can happen is sometimes you may get so used to doing it that you don't think about it. You just go through it by without thinking and it doesn't, uh, doesn't resonate with you. It doesn't make your, get in your head like it's supposed to. So I wanted to go through this. Uh, the way I am being disorganized, I am. I probably won't go through in order. And this is a good... Uh, Good. Uh, this will show you that that's probably true because I'm going to start off and go to the summary of the law, which on our bulletin this week is on page two, and it's the summary of the law. And it says, "Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says: You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it: You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now." This is, uh, these are words from Jesus. And that was, came from uh, one of the, uh, was that Pharisee? No, it was like it was a scribe. Anyway, someone came up to him and they were, uh, they were at that time they were testing him, trying to ask him questions, see if they could stump him, get him to mess up. And so one of them came up and asked Jesus what his most important commandment was. And this is the answer he gave. The most important commandment was, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. 
And the second is love your uh, neighbor as yourself. And then, then he went on to add, on, on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So everything else, all the other laws that come out telling people what to do and how they should live and all that, based on that. If you do those two things, you won't, you won't uh, go afoul of any of the other laws that are in there. But if you remember, after this was in, in one of the Gospels, after uh, Jesus gave this answer, somebody says, who is, your, who is our neighbor? And so that's when Jesus gave the parable of the uh, Good Samaritan. And basically, the moral of that story was anybody, uh, in, anybody you meet out there is your neighbor. And, you know, uh, this Good Samaritan, a hated foreigner, uh, did good things for this man. And, that, and Jesus said, well, who was the good neighbor? When the, you know, the priest and the scribe and all that went walking to the other side of the road, he said, who was the good neighbor? And, and this uh, Jew, this Jewish man, hated the Samaritan so badly he couldn't even say the Samaritan. He just said the one who gave him aid. But anyway, so uh, that tells us that if anybody that we come, that needs our help, that comes, uh, that we see out in the world is our neighbor and we need to love them. So that's where I get that love God, love others. So that's pretty much just a shorthand of the summary of the law that we have in our, our bulletin. All right. So let's get into the uh, lesson for today. I am today not going to uh, read or, or uh, look at Isaiah or the Psalms with you. I'm going to get right into the other two readings. And I'm going to go a little bit out of, or out of order. I'm going to do the gospel reading first. I'm going to do Mark. I remember I told you it's Mark 1. So let's move. Let's go to Mark. Second book, Matthew, Mark. And if you remember, I talked about Mark a little bit. <clears throat> he was uh, uh, had a, a Roman father and a Jewish mother, and he he when he writes, he gets after. He just phew, hits the ground running, no messing around. So you got to hold on whenever you read Mark because he's goes fast. So let's read, we're going to read um, Mark 1, and then it's going to be 7 through 11. See, that'll be easy, remember? 7, 11. 7 through 11. <clears throat> and he preached, saying, okay, so let me just give you a little background, because it starts right in the middle. This is uh, talking about John the Baptist, who was out in the wilderness. It says, and he preached, saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with the water, but he will baptize, baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then it, and it goes on and says, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being opened, totally torn open, and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice from heaven, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Okay, that's what, that's what this is, the first Sunday of Epiphany is about uh, Jesus' baptism and the, the Spirit descending upon him. Um, if a uh, little background, of course, uh, like I said, Mark just jumps right into it, but uh, we, he doesn't even, it's, he starts off with John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness. He doesn't speak of Jesus' birth or uh, anything of his earlier life. Uh, Matthew and Luke talk about his birth. And the only other mention between the time he's uh, born and goes off to Egypt and, and comes back and doesn't say exactly what age he was when he comes back, but the only other mention of Jesus during that time period before he starts his ministry is when he's seven years old and he's brought to Jerusalem. And that's when, if you remember, he's he stayed around uh, when his parents left with the uh, with the group of family, and they couldn't find him after they were gone for a couple of days. They had to go back and find him, and they found him in the temple, teaching the, the uh, priests and the, the scribes and the Pharisees in the in the uh, church, talking with them like he was one of them and as old old as they were. Okay, so this is uh, this is. Jesus is roughly 30 years old when he started his ministry, so you know, 
from seven and third, we don't know what was going on. We had a pretty good, pretty good idea. He was living in Nazareth. Uh, you know, people just like to say is, you know, his dad was a carpenter, so he's probably worked as a carpenter during that time. When I say dad, I mean his, his basically his stepdad. His, his father was, was God, and his, his stepdad was Joseph. But he was, uh, it doesn't mention what's going on, but he shows up in here and uh, it starts off his ministry by going to uh, to John the Baptist to be baptized. Now, there, in the other Gospels, it talks about John saying, hey, I, I shouldn't be baptizing you, you should be baptizing me. And, and Jesus says, I'm doing this to fulfill what God wants me to do. So, uh, but in this one, it just says he came and was baptized. And as soon as he came up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open. And the, and the spirit descended on him like a dove and a voice from heaven. You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. So this starts off his ministry. Great way to start, right? You got a voice from heaven. You see the Holy Spirit descending on, on someone. And the voice of heaven says, that is my son who I'm well pleased. So this gets the, uh, this is the start of Jesus' ministry. Now I want to turn over to the Acts. It's going to be uh, uh, Acts 10. It's right after John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. And uh, as you know, uh, Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke to uh, someone in Theophilus, and he was this, this same person. Uh, it's not part of my reading, but I'll just go ahead and stop at Acts 1 and say, and read what it says. It says, in the first book O Theophilus, I guess I'm saying that right, Theophilus. I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until that day when he was taken up after he had been given commands through our Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. So that's this Acts. It's the continu continuation of Luke. It moves on. So we're, we're into 10, chapter 10. And this kind of chapter 10, I'm going to read it for you, uh, chapter 10, 34 through 38. But then I'm going to talk a little bit about before and after because it just kind of it's kind of wedged in between uh, two really good uh, uh, scriptures for us, two good chunks for us to go over. So Acts chapter 10, verse 34 through 38. So Peter opened his mouth and said, "Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality." But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, as for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout, throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about, went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So that's the end of our read. So basically, this is uh, this is Peter uh, appearing to the Gentiles. This is uh, Epiphany. Uh, basically, is the um, revelation the, uh, of Jesus to the uh, to the Gentiles. Gentiles would be us because. To, a Jewish, to the Jewish people, anyone who wasn't Jewish was a Gentile, okay? And they, like, they didn't much care for, they thought all non-Jews, all Gentiles were unclean, okay? So, this is when it was revealed to, uh, well, the apostles and to Gentiles, hey, this Jesus, uh, the, the Messiah is not just for the Jewish people, it's for everyone. And that's, that's great news for us, right? So I wanted to tell you, I'm not going to go through a great detail, but kind of just throw my middle there kind of uh, leads you thinking, well, what, 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 how this, where did this come from? So there's two things that happen before, uh, before, this, before Peter gets there. First off is that uh, uh, there's a town on the, on the coast, Caesarea, uh, where there was a man named Cornelius. Now, Cornelius is very important in this. He was a soldier, a centurion in the uh, in the Roman army. He was a devout man who feared God. I'm reading that from from the book. I mean, from the 
chapter 10, the beginning, if you want to read that. And probably, if you have time, after the after you uh, read, listen to the lesson, you might read all of uh, Acts chapter 10. It's very interesting. But uh, there was, he feared God, and he gave alms, which is, he, uh, he helped people out, gave them money and food and things generously to the people, and he prayed content, continually to God. So about the ninth hour of the day, I I'm used to, I probably shouldn't know that. It's probably like uh, like three in the afternoon or something like that. He saw clearly a vision. An angel of God came in, came in and saw an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. All right, so he sends out he sends out some people, uh, two of his servants and, uh, and a devout soldier, uh, to go and, and and seek out Peter as this vision had told him to do. At the same time, about this is well. Uh, the next day, so this is about the time when these people are going to show up. Peter is out on the rooftop. Um, I guess they had kind of a roof, rooftop houses there. They had little places where you go sit up on top of the roof, 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 uh, and uh, and it was the same. These two, two people, these two servants and the soldier. It's about the sixth hour, uh, and they are approaching the city, and uh, Peter's up on the roof, and he's getting hungry, and so they're fixing him some food. He's waiting for it. And he, had, and he kind of had, and he has a vision. And the vision is a great blanket, a great, uh, um, a great sheet called, it's lowered down, tied on the four corners by ropes, ascended from heaven. And on it is all the bad things, all the things that Jewish people would need. Oh, you know, like, you know, lizards, uh, certain kinds of animals with wrong kinds of hooves. All, I don't know all the Jewish dietary laws, but there are certain, there's certain animals they just wouldn't eat. Well, you've heard of them not eating pork. They would not eat pork, right? Would not eat uh, pigs. So this sheik is lowered down, has all these things on it. And uh, a voice from heaven says, uh, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter says, well, uh, by no means, Lord. So he knows it's God. He says, for I've never eaten anything that's common or unclean. So uh, God, uh, the voice says to him, what God has made clean, do not call common. So this happened to Peter three times. She went up, came down three times, and the voice said it three times. So Peter's probably getting a pretty good idea. Well, this is, this is important. This is serious. So he, uh, at about the exact same time, they these, these three people that are coming from uh, Cornelius knock at the door, and they say they're looking for, for Peter. And he said, that's me. And they said, we would like you to come with us. Uh, our, uh, the, the man we work for had a vision and told us to come look for you. So uh, Peter uh, gets up and goes. And I always say that back when I was little, I used to think, well, it's just kind of like Peter, maybe it's another guy went off. But uh, several people went with him. There are always crowds of people seem to go around so there'd be witnesses to all these things. So we, we read where uh, Peter started preaching to them and that uh, and it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. So he's telling this Jesus came and did all these things. And then here's the part I'm with. This is this is a whole lesson that should just take up our whole time. But I'm I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what happens later, just so that uh, to tie the whole story or lesson today up. But it says that uh, Peter starts preaching to them, telling them about all that uh, uh, that God had done, about how Jesus did all these good things, and how he'd been persecuted, and this. Uh, it says, uh, put to death by hanging him on a tree. In other words, he was crucified and how God raised him on the third day. He made him to appear not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses. 
he ate and drank with them and he wrote after he rose from the dead and uh he says to him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him believes in jesus receives forgiveness of sins through his name so here's the thing that's important to us is because you know as we're saying gentiles non-jewish people uh that uh very exciting thing is it says that while peter was still saying these things while he's still talking to them, still teaching them, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the circumcised, the circumcised would be the Jewish people, that went with Paul, I mean, the Peter, as I said, you know, several people went with him, who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. So uh, this this is God telling the, the, the apostles, telling the Gentiles, everyone, Jesus is not just for the Jewish people, it's for everyone. So it's for you, it's for me, it's for all of us. And uh, that's the way we can tell that we've received uh, Jesus as our Savior. First, you know, you ask him in your heart, you see, ask Jesus to be your Savior. And then God will always put, give you the Holy Spirit, put the Holy Spirit in you. Now, in here it says that they could tell that they were uh, filled with the Holy Spirit because they started speaking in tongues and And, and doing other things like that. It doesn't mean you're going to speak in tongues, but you will have the Holy Spirit within you to protect you, to teach you, to guide you, uh, to be all the things that you need. So anyway, I think this is exciting news for us as, um, as non-Jewish Christians, uh, that uh, this, this is where uh, the first shown to all people that Jesus was for everyone. And so that means that uh, when you go around and you see people, and you see Nate, and you see and you see people that are out and, and need things and maybe need Jesus, they, they don't have to live next door to you to be your neighbor. It can be anyone. Uh, it can be from any country, any place. Uh, tell them about Jesus. They need to know too. And um, maybe the Holy Spirit will come upon them, and they'll they'll have eternal life, and that'll be a great thing. So. That's our lesson for today. Hope I didn't ramble and run through it too fast. It's a lot there. But, I, you know, right there in the middle, it's kind of hard. It kind of, without reading from, from uh, Acts right there in the middle, it's kind of hard to make sense of unless you have the before and the after. So. But anyway, I uh, hope you all have a good week. I hope you have a good Sunday uh, morning, good Sunday afternoon, and the rest of your week coming up. Uh, remember, stay safe. Uh, Wear your mask when you go out. Uh, take care of yourself. Um, remember not remember to worry about other people too. Have a uh, heart for other people, and also remember whenever you are, wherever you are, it could be an opportunity to be a witness for Jesus. So you ought to do it. And uh, let's also let's go go out. And before I pray, remember to tell you, love God, love people. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this word uh, that we got from your holy scripture. Thank you for opening our hearts so we can understand. Thank you for uh, telling us uh, what we need to know and teaching us about uh, Jesus and about how he's for all of us. Please help us to uh, know that since he did such a great thing for us, we ought to tell other people so he can do a great thing for them. Please watch over us this week. Keep us safe and strong and well. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bye. Have a good week.